Blessed day, my viewers and my subscribers. Before we jump into the topics, may I beg you to hit that like button. It will be greatly appreciated. Now, the topics coming up in this video. Tanya Stevens exposes another dancehall artist allegedly raping a 14-year-old girl in the past. Mr. Vegas gets bashed after this in Nicki Minaj wickedly and calls her a culture vulture. And Mr. Vegas also gives respect to Cardi B. Radio host Nicki Z defend Buju Bantan's daughter after JCF issued a statement that they needed to see her in person. Footer Hype reacts to the news about Superman now being a bisexual DC superhero and Dark Paul Lawyer gets bashed for saying he was a good person from her perspective. So the first thing we're going to talk about is Tanya Stevens exposing another dancehall art and of course you know the so people in the comment section less than 10 minutes after she made the post I tell her so she need to call name this time you understand because of course you don't know with fair situation she never tell nobody who was the perpetrator but basically Tanya Stevens is now using her Instagram page to help the voiceless people who go through certain things them can email certain things to her or maybe message her and she will actually post it on her Instagram page so the post that she made exposing another artist is basically on behalf of someone you understand so now that me say that let's get into the post so she start off the post by saying sometimes when it rains it pours and i continue sharing the voices of the previously voiceless if you recognize yourself in these stories as a predator go make it right it is alleged that in 1996 a well-loved artist invited two 10th grade high school girls out they went and he first R.E.P.E. them and invited 14 of his friends to R.E.P.E. them too. When it was over, he showed them a pit and threatened to throw them in. On top of the trauma, the physical damage was so great that one of them remains unable to have children to this day. I will not take on the job of judge or jury. Go make it right with the universe. Hashtag enough. Hashtag end rape. Hashtag end gender based violence. Hashtag time for change. So that is what Tanya Stevens is sharing. You understand? Artists, you know, in making man him friends, them deal with the girls, them 10 grade at that people. So even though this is alleged because I know somebody has shared them experience about a particular artist. So basically after Tanya Stevens post that, somebody jump in at the comment section and say, if you know the artist's name, you should say it. Let's start protecting predators. Now, Tanya Stevens actually respond to the person and say, people like you must be restricted. And she go on for say, I restricted you because you seek gossip and this space has none. From now onwards, when you comment, none of the other people here will not be able to see your comments, but you will still be able to view theirs. You're free to leave, but I hope you stick around and learn something. Peace. So Tanya Stevens just basically upset because the person wants her for call name, you understand? I remember said Tanya can't do that because the person probably confide in her in a certain way. You understand what I say, people? Um, but yeah, an next person said, props to you and others who highlight sexual abuse. It's been present in our community for decades. We need to make it okay for a victim to speak out. No more victim blaming and shaming. I've already said we need to have an international million woman march against sexual, physical and emotional violence. And Tanya Stevens responded and said, there is soon post. Is it? So look like they're going to have some form of march or something, people. Is it? But the question more I ask to one of people, all right, so if Tanya Stevens keep back certain things to herself, like the persons, them, do you think that is helping the situation? And it's just a question, Zane, because as I said in previous videos, I would never ever tell anybody to them need for call name. You highlighting the situation is actually good enough. You understand? You, if you want to talk, you do it on your own time. But there's a question that I want to ask to you guys, right? If a man knows somebody who will commit some crime, but him decides him now go tell the people him a who, him does go say him know a man who will commit certain crime. Crime. Would he actually be helping the situation or making it worse? You understand? Because as I say, it's kind of similar if you look into it, you know. A lot of these perpetrators, people can point them out, but them just not go do it. You understand? So that means say, some persons would have said the person still get for room and go do it to other persons. You understand what I'm saying? But anyway, people, as I said, just leave some comments in the comment section and let me know what you think about this. So the next thing we're going to talk about is Mr. Vegas being bashed for dissing Nicki Minaj. You understand, people? And of course, you know, say Cardi B keep her party. So a lot of persons, they know them are comparing Nicki Minaj and Cardi B because it seems like the two of them love dancehall. Nicki Minaj says she represents for Gaza. She rate Vibes Cartel. She rate Beanie Man. Cardi B rate Vibes Cartel. Cardi B rate Alka. She rate Spice. She rate all of the dancehall artists. Them. So let's get into this article 
and one can tell more anything if you don't agree with Mr. Vegas. Yes, my people, so the article says, Mr. Vegas under fire for calling Nicki Minaj a dancehall culture vulture while praising Cardi B. Nicki Minaj fans took to Instagram and Facebook to rebuke dancehall veteran Mr. Vegas after he described their queen and Drake as being dancehall culture vultures while giving props to rapper Cardi B following her dancehall team Passa Passa birthday party two nights ago. Unlike Nicki and Drake, Cardi sincerely loved dancehall. She does not see it as a little flavoring for albums or remixes. The queen dedicated her birthday to a culture Passa Passa dancehall. This is how you know she is not a vulture. Vegas, who performed at the party, had written on Instagram and Facebook in capital letters. Following the outrage from the vibes, Vegas edited the post three hours later and deleted Minaj and Drake's name. However, the damage had already been done. As some some of the artist fans who stormed to his Facebook page to rebuke his claims resurrected the edited post and reshared it on the thread. While the accusations against Drake remain largely undisputed, Minaj fans accuse Vegas of being decisive and of having personal vendetta against the rapper after he said she did not benefit from her use of Danny Bow's filter rhythm for her song Megatron, on which Vegas' head's eye was also laid. Nicki literally samples one of your songs. One fan wrote, in defense of Nikki, to which Vegas replied, and straight up cut me out of the winnings. F Nikki. The vibes who saw the heads I sing as response were highly amused. Mr. Vegas, that's on you. Laugh my ass off. Read your effing contract. One person wrote, At Mr. Vegas, I'm weak as F, so you're just mad you ain't get no money. Another follower told him that Minaj owed him nothing. She paid the right person royalties for the song. Why don't you take her to court if you think she did you wrong? She wrote, Quote, Nicki Minaj fans argue that the Trinidadian cannot be typecast as a culture vulture, firstly, because she's from the West Indies and that she has, in words and indeed, helped to uplift dancehall by, among other things, collaborating with many of the genre's artists, including Movado, Stylogy, Vibes Cartel, Beanie Man, Egyptian, and most recently, Skilly Bang and the Crocodile Teeth remix, which peak at the number 100 on Billboard Hot 100. So people, we're not thinking about that, Zane. I'm not even going to read out the full article. But the question more I ask, you know, is Nicki Minaj a culture vulture? And somewhat, somebody said that she come from Trinidad, so she cannot be a culture vulture. Is that true? Because you don't know, say you come from Trinidad, but you live overseas for some time. So some people just look on it and say, sure, you know, even some of the Trinidad people, them, them not really claim Nicki Minaj, them call her a sellout after she was um, basically bigging up the Jamaican runners, them and all them things there. But regardless, from your born somewhere, you're born somewhere, you understand, you can't born two places at once. But yeah, people, is Nicki Minaj a culture vulture? Which one of them you think love dance all more? She or Cardi B? You see me? But according to some of the people, Mr. Vegas just upset at Nicki Minaj because he never get paid for the whole heads eye sample or whatever. You see it, people? Let me know what you think about this. And let me know if you don't agree with um, Mr. Vegas. You see me? And also, is Drake a culture vulture? Because <laughs> you don't know see them always say that about him. But let me know what you think about this in the comment section. So the next thing we're going to talk about is Nicki Z defending Bujo Bantan's daughter, Abby Hill Myrie after the JCF, well, after a post was made over by the Jamaica Star in which the post said, JCF says Abigail Myrie must come forward. The police have requested to physically see Abigail Myrie, the 21-year-old daughter of veteran artist Bojo Bantan, after she was classified as a missing person yesterday. His own man said, so as I said, that article was posted over on the Jamaica Star Instagram page. Nikki Z actually went in the comment section and basically this is what she have to say. Come forward for what? Zoom caller. Especially if any woman says they're hiding for safety. Is woman say people. Somebody respond to Nikki Z and say, so if somebody is holding her hostage, them no can set up the Zoom call and let her play it off. Or uno say ignorant. So Nikki Z respond and say, actually you can Zoom check in and it be verified. Going to the office can endanger victims as well in case you weren't aware, but also carry on. Is it people? So Nikki Z feel like she should not actually go to the police station, like physically go to them. She can do a Zoom call or something like that. What do you guys think about that? Do you actually agree? And I see where some persons are saying that Buju seem like him not write it upstairs. Is it? And I know me as I say, no people at the comments them um in the comment section. You see me, one person say I'm worried for her because I know Buju not so right upstairs. And next person say, I'm tired of that story I know. 
but it really puzzles me why Bujo and his kids don't get along. A next person said, with how vocal Bujo has been about the CV-19 and people getting the, the, the vax, I find it questionable that he is yet to comment on this matter. I guess we are all full of energy about other people's businesses until it's our business in the spotlight. So when I see what the people must say, I don't really know if I say, is it me? I can't give her advice whether she's returning herself or not. She often know if she not feel safe, you understand? But I don't know, police can't forward what she does. She can't call them and tell them to come to a certain spot so they can see her and all of that. You see, I don't know people. Only let me know where you think about this in the comment section. So the next thing we're going to talk about is Futa Hype reacting to the news of a Superman we actually like man. You understand people? So Superman is by and of course you don't know say YouTube have to kind of careful of the words them when we use constant. Because I don't know them do them thing already. You see my people? But before me even show you where Futa Hype post, I'm going to read the article. <laughs> I only can tell me where anything. Jano Star, I'm glad I love cartoon. But anyway, people, um, this is how it says. Is it a bird? Is it a plane? No, it's the first by Superman. Superman fell for a reporter and now his son is doing the same. Although this time, the superhero's love interest is in a man called Jay. DC Comics announced on Monday that the new Superman, who is the son of Clark Kent and Lois Lane, will have a romantic relationship with a male friend, John Kent, and budding journalist Jay Nakamura struck up a friendship in a story released in August. They will share a KISS in a comic to be published next month. The publisher said describing Kent as bi, following a scene where Superman mentally and physically burns out from trying to save everyone that he can, Jay is there to care for the Man of Steel. The storyline will feature in Son of Kal-El, issue 5, due to hit shelves on November 9th. The publisher said in a press release headline, John Ken find his identity. Today, more people can see themselves in the most powerful superhero in comics, said Tom Taylor, who writes the series. Fans took to social media to express their joy at the development development this news about superman makes my queer heart glad boy i'm gonna tell you yo what kind of people may not read no more of the article you know zane basically them even not talk about the latest robin in the batman comics come out as by in august you understand people so even um robin and all of them type of thing there jano star what them do to the cartoon characters them people me know superman for love woman you understand what i say woman make him weak so I'm not even say why they might try to push this agenda upon people. You see me? I end of the day still, we don't see what's going on in the world, you know. You understand? And that is why Futa I put out this video and make people know say him glad say him sons them love woman. You see me people, so check out the reaction from Futa Hype here. Yo right now, I just wanna give God thanks that my boys, my sons, are interested in girls. You see what they did to Superman? Yo, that's messed up all right so let me know what you guys think about this jano superman things will never be the same again Ah oh boy. Anyway, people, as I say, let me know what you guys think about this in the comment section. So now we're going to move on to um, Dark Paul Lawyer getting bashed by a lot of persons on social media. And that is because she said that she knew him to be a nice person, very charismatic and all of that. But anyway, people, let's get into this article and then I'm going to show now some of the comments them from the people. Me see me? So the article says, Dark Paul was a good youth. Attorney of 17 years said society should have made better use of reputed gang Gangster Diane Jobson, the lawyer who represented reputed gangster Christopher Dark Paul Linton from he was a teenager, said she found him to be charismatic and a natural born leader. She said that is, is a pity that the society didn't make good use of those characteristics rather than treat him like a fugitive from justice or a man that should be feared or gone down like an animal. Linton 35, who the police said was linked to several murders and shootings was on Monday cut down by lawmen following a reported gunfight in Elliston Flat St. Andrew. His death came six months after he was released from prison. The police of four years said that Linton was a violence producer in sections of St. Andrew. He and Mika Allen were sentenced to 15 years in prison for illegal possession of a firearm and 15 years for shooting with intent in 2013. However, in April, they were set free by the Court of Appeal. Jobs said that from her interactions with him, she found him to be very intelligent she also said that he was a good youth 
who she surmised more than anything else, wanted to be a father to his children and to live a productive life. She also said that he had a positive influence on his community of Tavern. When they had him incarcerated is when all the crimes and the gang rose up, so he was obviously maintaining a kind of discipline and so on in that community. I know he also contributed to basic schools. He was a positive influence. Those were the things I knew about him as a person, she said. While he is widely viewed throughout the society as a bad man who unleashed terror through the use of gun violence, Jobson, a senior attorney, said that there were many sides to Dark Pa, one of which was that he was sensitive. I recall that he wrote beautiful poetry and songs. I even once suggested to him while he was in captivity and was writing to publish a thing of his poems because it would have been surprising to know that he had that sensitive side to him. Johnson told the star yesterday. She also said that from her interactions with him, Linton was a very devoted son. She said that he wrote a poem honoring his mother, Clarice Sr. The poem which she said was titled Mama spoke about the positive role she played in his life. Jobs said that her interactions with him led her to conclude that he was a dedicated father. I recall years ago before he was taken in custody, he had gone to the school where his son was because he heard the son was having a little bit of problem with a student at the school. So he had gone to speak with the teacher. This was when he was a person of interest for the police and took the chance to go there. A past student of Jamaica College, Jobs said Linton was no fool. The fact is that it is another potentially wordful life that they have snuffed out. I don't know what the circumstances were that he was SHOT and KILLED, but I am sure it was something that they could have not taken him into custody without cutting him down. The lawyer said, Borrow in a line from Bob Marley's song, Jobs said that Linton was the product of a society that did not harness his potential. Oh, ja, not the one who pulled the trigger, but the one who set him up. And when the society set up, set up a system that crime is a viable alternative, that is the sad part of it all. She said, so yes, people, as me say, a lot of persons are Bashar, you understand? Me even say somebody left a comment and say, come in like she did a sleep. <laughs> Come like she did a sleep with him, isn't it? So let's get into these comments and only can tell more anything about what she's saying, is it, people? So one person left a comment saying, My conclusion is, his attorney rolled off the bed this morning and hit her head. If you earned a law degree with that type of reasoning, then I should have been an astronaut. <laughs> and next person said, um, He was sleeping with you. That's why you labeling him as a good person. And next person said, Good you, no K-I-L-L people, you know. So I lie them and tell upon him. An next person said, him never did charismatic when him did a R-O-B, K-I-L-L and a thief. So stop showing sympathy to people who do wrongs and never see no problem with it. What a disgrace. An next person said, so in other words, Jamaica failed this man. Therefore, his actions should be justified. Dodos did many great things for, for thousands of people in Jamaica. But are we going to use that to downplay the fact that he was responsible for many crimes and life loss? Let's call it for what it is. That man was a damn criminal. He lived the life he loved and it took him out. Enough good people with exceptional qualities that do very bad things in our society. This man is no exception. They need to use this to tell others at risk young men and women that badness doesn't pay and encourage the state to help them choose a higher road by having more aggressive social programs. Is it people? So where do you think? When I agree with the lawyer, you know, when I feel like say, a society feel dark power and that is why he was labeled as a criminal. Is it? Let me know where anything about this in the comment section. Anyway, people, that's it. You know. Thanks for watching the video. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and turn the bell on. Bless upon yourself and keep safe. I'm out.